Hello. In this video, we're going to create a virus in Python that will show you how a piece of code can replicate itself, execute itself in other positions and other places, and uh, spread around on your computer. The second part of the video is we're going to take another Python program and we're going to detect any changes that were made in our scripts and detect the infections that our original virus made. This is not a real virus. This is a Python script that only affects other Python scripts, and so it really isn't what you're looking for if you're trying to hack somebody or spread malicious code. But it is a good demonstration of how code can duplicate itself and execute unexpectedly. So let's take a look at how this program works here. You can see on the screen that I have a directory open that has two Hello World programs. Let's open those and see what they look like. So you can see, by the way, that I'm using the uh, program called Idle. Idle is the uh, b most basic code editor that you can get, an executor of Python. So if you want to download uh, the Python Idle editor, you can get it at the official website python.org slash downloads. When you download Python, you will not only get the runtime to make Python work on your computer, but you will also get this uh, editor that will write and run code. A lot of programmers that work with Python would work with uh, more advanced editors, like uh, maybe they would use PyCharm, or they would use Visual Studio Code. But we're just going to use the most basic of the editors because that's what you get when you install Python with the default packages. Well, you can see that the first program that I've created is the simple print Hello World. That's the nice thing about Python. You have one line of code, and if you go to the Run command and choose Run Module, you will see that it shows the blue text here, Hello World. So it seems to be working there. Let's open up the other, it's called hello again. And the point of these two scripts is to demonstrate that the virus code that we're going to write will infect these files. So if I run this thing here, I should get two different statements and there they are, hello world and hello again. All right, so let's go look at our Python virus code. That's what's open on the screen here. And this is the code that is going to run and copy itself into all other Python scripts in this directory. So I'm limiting the infection to one folder. It's not going to ruin your whole computer, so you can be safe with that. So I'm going to run this module now, and it will say it infected a file. And you can see on the screen here that the icon in Macintosh shows the preview of the contents of the file. Let's see what's inside hello now. And you can see that the original hello world was here, and the copy of the code itself is inside of here. So this is a pretty easy program to disinfect. You just say, I, what are all these stupid lines here? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highlight them and get rid of them. Okay, so I have, I have disinfected this file. However, if somebody comes along and they run this file, which is hello again, and they run it, it should infect other code on the program as well. So the code is replicating itself across all other scripts in the folder. And so that's what we're going to build by the end of this video. So the first thing I'm going to do is delete all the folders, all the files that are in this uh, folder here, and we'll start from scratch. So let's go to our idle program here and start a new file. So let's go to new file, and let's start working on our virus. All right, before I do anything else, I'm going to save this code here. So let's go to Save under the File menu. So I created a folder called Python Virus, and I'm going to put in here Python Virus as the file name and .py for the extension. Okay, so you can see I have a new file in my folder. The first thing I want to do is create a comment that starts the virus code and ends the virus code. We're going to use this in our script to be able to figure out where the beginning and ending of the code is, obviously. The first thing I want to do is to take a copy of everything that you see between the starting point and the ending point and save it into a list. So I'm going to create a list called virus code, and this will save all the lines that are currently on the screen. The next step is I'm going to open up the file that I'm currently in, my own, my own self, and I'm going to read all the lines that are in it. So then I want to filter out all the lines that are not inside the virus code boundary. Now I want to capture the file name. And so in Python, the sys.argv array is a list of things that are passed into every program. 
And the first parameter or the first argument given to a program is the actual file name of the program itself. So I'll set a variable called virus file. And this will open up this file and it will open it up as a read only file. So let's call the function called read lines. And let's save all those lines into a list called lines. Okay, so now let's do a test to see if we're actually reading the lines and we'll print them onto the screen. This would be a good time to save it and to run the code. As you can see, when I run the code, there's an error. It says my name sys is not defined. And so this here, this uh, sys arguments, doesn't work. So what we need to do next is add a include. So we need to add the system modules, and let's see if this will run better now. Okay, so you can see that the, uh, the code is designed to read itself and print it out into the screen as a list. Okay, so that seems to work. I'm going to delete this testing line now. We know that it's reading the file correctly. So in the next part of this program, I'm going to try to save all of these lines into a list, and I will use this list later to insert into other code. So I'm going to create a variable that's a Boolean, and I will make it a flag to say, are we in the virus section? And we'll initially set it to false. Then I'm going to go through each line that I read, and I'm going to do a test on it to see have, if we come to the part called the starting virus code. Now to be able to check to see if I have reached this line, I want to do a string matching pattern. So I'm going to use a regular expression library. So I'm going to say re search, and I'm going to search for a string here. Now re is something that I have to import as well. So let's go up to the top and put in an import re. That stands for regular expressions. Now the expression that I'm searching for is this code at the beginning. So let's just copy that and paste it into here. Now I want to be very careful to say that I want this to be a caret at the beginning to say we're going to search and it has to match the very first entry in the line. So I don't want to match this string if it's not the first character in the line. There's two parameters for the search and we need to say that the second parameter is the string that we're looking for. So this is a string inside of the, uh, in the lines. So now if we have found this string, then we can confidently say that we are now inside the virus code. So I will set the boolean in virus to e equal to be true. All right, some more comments now to say what we're going to do next. We're going to put in the comments to say if the virus code has been found, if we have reached this section, then start appending the lines to the virus code list. So this virus code list initially started off as a empty list. And then we will uh, just build this uh, list as we go down. Now we assume that the virus code is usually appended at the end of the script. So to implement this, we have to have an if statement. So if we are inside of the virus, then we will append the line to the list called virus code. All right, the next search we want to do is to see if we've reached the end of the list. So I'm going to do another regular expression search. And the search uh, string that we're looking for is the code here, this comment at the bottom. So let's copy the end of virus code and place it inside of our search string. So I'll put in the uh, caret to begin the search line as well. Also, we need to tell it which string we're looking for, which is called line. All right, so if we have reached the end of the code, then we will break out of this for loop. So we'll put in the word break. Okay, so all of this code here was done just to save all the lines of the virus code into a list. And the list is called virus code. All right, the next section down is we're going to find potential victims that we can infect. So the next command that I'm going to use is called glob. And we need to import this as a part of another module that is extending Python. But glob is very handy. It will take a pattern match and search for all programs inside of our folder. And so we're going to only search for anything with a PY extension. That's the only victims that we can infect. So since we're using glob, let's go up to the top of the import section and add glob there. So the next thing I need to do is to check and infect all of the programs that glob found for us. So we'll make a for loop. 
we're going to do a for loop for all programs that were listed. So we'll call each uh, iterator a P. Now we want to open up P as a read-only file. And then we will save all of the lines that came from that file into a list called program code. After we have read all the lines, I'm going to check to see if this code has already been infected. So we will assume that this program is not infected yet, so we'll set the boolean flag to false. Now we're going to go for each line in the program code, and we want to search for that specific line that tells us that we have already found the infected code, and if it's already there, then let's set it to a variable called infected to set to be true. So as we used before, we have a special string that we know we can search for to tell us if that is in our code, we know it's infected. So if we find the string, then we will stop, we will do a break, and that will break out of the for loop, and we don't need to inspect this program again. So the interesting thing now happens if we are not infected. What we're going to do is create a new list called new code. And this will be a concatenation. So the new version, our new code, is going to be the current code that we have in our script, plus we'll tack on the virus code at the end. And so the infection just is an append operation to add more lines to the code. So the first assignment we can do is simply say that the new code is equal to the program code. Now remember, program code is what we just read into the file, so or from the file. So whatever was in there, we will make into the new code. However, we want to extend the new code, so the extend operation will concatenate the two lists. So now we have a new code, we want to write this back to the file, overwriting the original version of our script. So we'll open up a file, remember the file name is called p, and we will open it up as a write permission. So the uh, write lines is the uh, command we're looking for, and we want to write new code into our file, and then we'll close the file. So the whole point of a virus is to be able to do something, and usually that's called the payload. So our payload is where we do our evil work. You can imagine that you could delete files, you could copy things, you could do key logging, you could do all kinds of password sniffing. In our case, this is a very um, uninteresting virus. The only payload we're going to do is print a graffiti message on the screen that says that this file is infected. Let's go to the end now, and we are going to delete the code. So this should all infect another file. Let's see if it actually does work. I'm going to make a new file and make hello world, and let's see if it works. So hello world is uh, created. Let's save it. And I'm going to call this thing hello py. And we'll close it. Okay, so we have the virus here, and we have the victim here. Now let's see if I made any typos. Let's run the module and see what happens. So it says this file is infected. Let's close the terminal. And it looks like hello is now filled with a virus code. So you can see the original line was one line. And now we have all of this code that goes all the way to the end. Let's close it. Let's make another version of our program. We'll call it hello. And let's print a couple of things on it. Let's save. And let's call this hello again, and name it .py. OK, so this one here is the uh, clear, uninfected version. Python has infected, uh, our Python virus has infected hello. Let's open up hello and run hello. And let's see what the results are. So it does print hello world, and then it says this file has been infected. If I close this and this, you can see now that hello world again has now picked up the code. So it was originally programmed in our virus file, it spread to hello, and now it is spread to hello again. So our virus seems to be replicating. Now the next part we need to do is to be able to detect changes and pretend that we are a virus scanner. So remember the point of this lesson is not to learn how to do malware, but to detect it and understand what viruses are trying to do. So let's do that in the next video.